welcome back all my overloader friends so we're doing the breakdown and review of the uh, frontiers deep dive uh, 3 for planet coaster 2 um, and so we're going to go ahead and watch the uh, the 26 minutes almost 27 minutes worth of uh, video footage of uh, of some more information on the game and um, and we'll break it down as we go along as well um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today, all the subscribers and the new ones that we've received, all the engagements on the videos with the thumbs ups and the comments. Thank you all so much. You guys truly rock and I do appreciate it. I do have a goal of reaching 500 subs by the end of the year uh, so that I can continue with this uh, beat of um, releasing videos as much as what I'm trying to do. Um, Otherwise, I might have to step back a little bit and um, and uh, and take a little bit of time. Um, so I'm really trying to push hard and and, and get that. So help me uh, hit that goal. Uh, make sure you uh, share this uh, video out if you like it, and uh, make sure you like and subscribe. And let's go ahead and get in here and watch it. So let's go ahead and start it, shall we? James and I'm a UI designer on Planet Coaster Two. And I'm Xander Payne, and I'm a senior games designer on Planet Coaster 2. We're really excited to be talking about Planet Coaster 2 today. In this deep dive, we're going to talk about all the management features that we have to offer. So, let's get straight into our Swim Impressive update. So, here we are in one of our career levels, Summit Awesome. So, it's a really, really interesting level, actually. I love what they've done with the art team for uh, for these scenarios. Really, really interesting. Mm, they've made it just so beautiful having things like I, I love that we've got like the park set up into two sides, uh, and then with the with the the monorail going between the two, it's uh, it is really really, really cool. interesting. I do like this actually. <laughs> this does look really really nice. Um, we're, we are going to skip through this because this is a long video, but uh, yeah, this is. I am liking this though on the the new scenery aspects that we got here. Um, but it's worth knowing that we are on a on a development build, so not everything you see here is final. So to dive straight in into. Oh yeah, so this here, if you look right down here, it's a uh, uh, work in progress, and uh, it's from August uh, 2024 uh, development build. So um, just the other month. So all right. All these management features so first we're going to take a look at the hud um so in the previous deep dives we've 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 shown off things about the browser but it's good to kind of have a look and see what what things maybe didn't exactly get explained or touched on um so first off all the blueprints are here by default and then you can also look at the the tools on the right and these tools are present in each one of the tabs inside of the browser um and it allows you basically to switch between build and new or building from these blueprints and that's the same across these um, inside of the career levels as well you will have some research so not all these blueprints will be available to you straight off the bat but as you progress through the career you're going to be able to unlock more of these blueprints but you can always build new so there's always an option for you um, and then in the scenery as well lots of blueprints lots in the scenery of of We've, scenery. Uh, the, the art team have outdone themselves bringing so many uh, items to our uh, blueprints to the game as well one of the things that you'll be happy to know about is the fact that we can actually increase the browser size um with as you say with so many scenery parts it's good that you're able to see more and more of them if we look up in this top left hand side you've got a few extra tools that'll be really integral to your management so one is notifications um, obviously we got notifications for all different types and usually the ones that will appear in here will be I mean it's just like pretty much from the the original one as well as Planet Zoo kind of the minor ones but as things start to progress and more important things start to appear you will see new variations of this notification button appear down here so that you can always have a straight look at the really important things um, going on in your park for example if a staff were to be fired or something like that that's something you really need to know right off the bat don't need to know that. What, what, what are they going to do? <laughs> One of the other tools we've got is park expansion. Oh, yes. Here we go. A really, really cool tool. So um, 
We haven't really got much additional land to build on in this level, but in some of the other ones, you're able to expand out your level by buying different sections of land. And one really cool thing that we're doing is giving limitations on these bits of land as well. So as you can see here, like this one, for obvious reasons, you can't put passables um, or terrain or scenery. And the no scenery? <laughs> you can't play scenery scenery? Wow, this... Okay, this this one's going to be an interesting... Um... Uh, task to, to get through on that so that means then you're not going to be able to get rid of any of the scenery because you're not going to be able to replace it so you'll have to run your tracks through interesting okay okay there'll be loads of different variation throughout all the different career levels um, so it gives players a real challenge on how they design their parks the next thing objectives so Obviously, with any career campaign, you have your objectives. You've got your bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So we got a platinum now. So in the first game, we only had three. We had the bronze, we had the silver, and we had the gold. Um, I can't remember with Planet Zoo. I think it was only three there as well, but now we have a fourth, the platinum. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you know about Planet Zoo, if, uh, if there is a fourth medal. But from what I can remember, I had the game. I've, I've played it quite a bit. I've made a few videos on the channel here. But I think there's only three. I think it's bronze, silver, and gold there as well. And these are being locked as you as you progress through the story. You can also you can open this on the side, or you can pin it on the top. So Ooh, I like you that. always have that visible as you do other things. And then, last but not least, is our management screen. All right, so let's see what we got here for management. Park operations, park ratings, guests, attractions, and shops, staff. Research and finance. Okay. Let's see here. Objectives. Build a new coaster. Have four flat rides. Okay. All right. So we've got a few different areas. I won't touch on them all because we're going to look a bit deeper in, so, in some of the sections a bit later in this deep dive. Um, but if we start off with the yeah, park yeah. options. Hold on, hold on. What do we got here now? Alright, so these are the summary, park ratings up there, park options. We can adjust the ticket type. Okay. So we have the priority pass. We have the pool pass. Children's entry ticket, adult's entry ticket. And then so these are just the, the, the basic ticketing options and whether you want to open close part, that sort of thing, and renaming it. Um, but one thing we've tried to keep integral within yeah, our management yeah. screens is... Okay, yeah, yeah, so that, yeah, yeah. It's this idea of sort of modular sections and having less information but showing more. So it's a lot more understandable for players and if they want the sort of not necessarily diving really really deep like you could with the info panels this is supposed to be surface level um interesting things that can make you do quick actions so another one for example park rating a lot more clear than in the first game um you're able to see which ones do really well and also we got this weighting system so the one that's doing performing the worst is actually going to have the most effect on your park so it's almost like an incentive to try and keep um all four of them kind of kind of equal as you progress so that the one that's doing the worst isn't going to really pull down your park rate in. Very quickly on guess, you've got, yeah, some different thoughts. Hang on, I'm going to speed that up just a little here. And then it also says your guess needs here. Um, obviously, the higher the higher the percentage, the more you meet those needs. Yeah. So high high is good, low is bad. <laughs> yeah. And um, Sander's going to so really dive into this deeply yeah, in right. a minute. So the next thing we'll look at quickly is the attraction of shops. Um, so this is just a, a basically a big list of everything that's in your park. You've got these drop-down menus, um, so you can easily organize. You've got your different sorting um, sorting abilities at the top. Um, able to see prestige, income, price, that sort of thing. So you can see everything at a kind of global global level within your park. And this is very similar then to the staff as well. Where you can see all of your staff, how they're paid, names, look locations, all that sort of thing. Um, research is what I briefly mentioned um, when I was talking about the browser. So obviously you're able to unlock all these different- I'm liking the research to the, 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 or the tech tree or research tree, whatever you would like to call it. But, uh, cause it, you know, it's like a tree kind of thing here. But um, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm liking the look of it so far. 
blueprints, um, and this will be done through this research screen, uh, where you gain research points through your career, through your career levels, and then you're able to use them here, spend them to unlock different blueprints. Yeah, so something that's uh, worth pointing out here is that uh, over the original Planet Coaster, we are now unlocking research across your whole campaign, so that you, you gain different nodes throughout the campaign, which you then keep. And I won't dive too much into this one because we're going to talk about this a bit later, but these are your finances. Inside of the settings now, we have added this accessibility tool to be able to increase and decrease your UI scaling. So if I apply it here, notice how everything oh, got larger. Oh, I love that. Um, so it's great I for love that. people on PC who want to be able to play the way they want to play. Um, you can see this is increased across everything. So all the browser is bigger, all these buttons, all the info panels, everything. Next, we're going to talk That's about heat perfect. maps, which I know you really are excited to talk about, Xander. Yeah, yeah. So, so the heat maps—they're they, a great um, sort of tool we've uh, we provided into this into this game that allows you to see how everything is working in your park. So, on this first heat map, we are looking at guest moods, and we can see if guests are happy or less happy based on the colours that the guests show up within the mood. And scrolling through the different ones, uh, you can see that like for, you can see the same things for their needs. So you can see where your guests are thirsty in your park and where they are hungry as well. The next one we can see here. Okay, they only show three out of the eight. I wonder what the other ones are. Comment down below what you think <laughs> the, the remaining five are. Because uh, we only saw what, what three were out of the eight. So <laughs> let me know what, the, what you think the other five are down in the comments. Is, the, is for guest tolerances. So in the original Planet Coaster, guests would have a tolerance for their nausea and fear. Uh, we have now got a few more tolerances and the guests will assess your rides uh, based on both the ride heights, the speed, as well as uh, the, um, the fear and the theming and the length of the queue. So different guests will be willing to wait for different lengths of time in queues, which is really cool. Yeah, really cool. And as well, we've, um, we've also added more complexity to the staff as well. Um, so yeah, we've got staff morale. As we can see here, if we zoom in on this little mascot guy, uh, we've got the staff morale, we've got staff pay, and we have the staff breaks. Um, <laughs> Golpy looks like he needs to <laughs> needs to go on a break. <laughs> um, They're overworking him. So yeah, it's not only guests that we've improved on, we've also improved on, on the staff as well. So the next one we're looking at is power. So power is a new feature that uh, is in Planet Coaster 2. And this allows you to, well, power your rides. <laughs> so it seems it seems like logical. Um, so I believe you've placed down a new coaster in this park. It might be on the other side. And over here, we can see that it has not got any power and it has a lovely little flashing UI icon for you. Okay, so. Uh, we don't need a generator, we need a distributor. So we already have generators on this side, as we can see since half of it is already powered. So we just need another distributor to basically increase this radius that has been made from uh, from the generators. So we need it. We're not we're not artists, so this isn't going to be pretty. We will just put it down and we will <laughs> we'll link it up to the system really easy. And boom, there we are. So now we've, we've got the water heat map, which allows you to see if you've got water running through all of your pools properly. And I like that. That's not bad. Uh, you know, it, it adds more realism to it, uh, more um, management uh, to to the aspect of the game, which it is a, a park management simulation game, but it's also a build game. So, but I do know though you can disable all that stuff in the settings if you want, if you go into sandbox mode and so forth. You can also see the water cleanliness, which is another feature of the water system. So the other thing you can do is then look at look at your profit, look at your finances, um, and these will then highlight all of your all of your shops, um, your guest services, that kind of thing that will uh, that will get you money over time, and you can basically see how well or badly they're doing. The next one to look at is the scenery, which I know is close to your heart, Sander. So do you want to talk yeah. a little bit about that? So the scenery is something that's very like important this. to the guests. I like this a lot. This feature here and to your park. So the rides themselves look at the scenery, um, and they will you know that will increase the prestige of the rides. Uh, in the original Planet Coaster, the scenery system was often quite opaque, and the players didn't necessarily see how it was working. So in this one, after request, we have brought it up to the players on a, in a heat map so that they can really see exactly what the scenery is doing and where it is affecting things. Yeah, it's really interesting as well because we know that our players love the. So now we'll be able to, you know, see where we need to add more coverage, what's being affected, what's not. I'm I'm really loving this feature in the uh, in the hot map in the heat map. It's uh yeah yeah, yeah really loving this. The, I'm <laughs> this this oh I can't wait for the game. I mean, <laughs> Not long now, not long now. November 6th. The creativity aspect. Um, so it's really good to kind of link this in between the, uh, the more improved management systems that we're trying to, uh, trying to work with. So you can make really beautiful parks, but it also has the impact as well. And then lastly is operations. So this is the sort of the wear and tear features of the rides, so how things are functioning. So we've got the, the condition, which tells you if the ride is working or if it's uh, in, in need of uh, assistance, basically. Yep. And then we got pool safety as well, um, which is basically if you've got these brand new staff types called lifeguards, which we will jump on after this when we start to talk about the pools. They basically just monitor and just make sure that all the pool is safe for all the guests that come across. So that is all of our, all of our heat maps so far. So you, you explained a lot about uh, the guests and the improvements we've done and um, how much deeper we've really gone into the systems there. Um, but we've also got 
the weather as well, which also has impacts on guests, right? Yeah, so the weather itself can affect the guests uh, in, in, in several different ways. One of the main ones being sunburn. So if you if you have a very hot park, uh, you know, you've been blessed with good weather, uh, then your, your guests will start to experience things like sunburn. So it's important to, uh, to provide the guests with... Um, I am curious to actually see this in game myself personally. Um, it, it's a very interesting concept because I mean it again. It adds more realism and it adds more of a uh, more 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 to the management aspect of of the game. So I'm really liking it. Uh, sun cream, which can be bought from several shops, or to also provide shade and cover in the park so that they, you know, ha aren't exposed to the sun for the whole duration of their stay. And also on the flip side of that as well, when it starts to rain quite a lot, what do you need? An umbrella. Exactly. We're, used, we're used to that in the UK. Nothing to <laughs> rain. So, so yeah. So you want to make sure that your your shops you're providing these things. So you want to be able to provide the sun cream, provide the umbrellas, um, to make sure your guests are happy in all weathers. So here is an example where it is actually raining, and you can see the guests themselves have got their umbrellas out. And uh, as this is Planet Coaster, you can of course sell umbrellas to your guests as well. Yeah, not everyone is going to be so prepared for the rain. You'd always expect when you go to a theme park, it's going to be nice and sunny. So if you are slightly disappointed by that, at least you can buy an umbrella in the park. And something that we wanted to present in, in Planet Coaster 2 with the weather is the predictability of it. You can see in a, on the screen at the moment uh, what the weather is forecast for the whole day, as well as what you should be expecting to see in the, in the coming days. Get if they're unhappy, if they're uncomfortable, and if they are desperate. Yeah, we've got a really interesting range of behaviours with these guests, so it's, just, it's really cool to be able to see how they react and how you, as someone managing this park, is able to try and contend with those issues and try radius but then the, the safety rating the safety rating will uh, start to decrease because you, you aren't covering the, the entire pool the other staff type we've got is ride attendants now in planet coaster 2 uh, these are people that are actually uh, staff you have to manage and control and tell them when to i like this idea I, I like the fact that that we have to manage and control the staff attendant here because again more realism more of a management aspect which is all playing into this game so um I really like what they did. They, I mean, they listened to the community and they tried to... It it looks as though they tried to do everything that we asked for. Um, still don't know about the transfer tracks, but, uh, you know, still got my fingers crossed for that happening. Actually, <laughs> when to do their shift. Exactly. So that's just another example of um, how much additional control now we've got over some of these staff members. And yeah, we've talked about uh, integral staff, but we've also got a couple new mascots, right? Um, so one of them... Is this really, really interesting bard with an absolutely fabulous ear? From my understanding, the music that these characters play, <laughs> this mascot, can be quite uh, uh, annoying <laughs> from what I've heard. So, uh, well, no, come November 6th, though, for sure. Yeah, I must say, myself. Um, it's got a lot of flair about him, doesn't he? Really, really. Oh, he's, he's fantastic. I'm just sort of speechless in awe. Look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just him as well. We also have the Viking as well. And he is absolutely Jim Goals. Or he, or she. She, <laughs> I was going to say. In this she, in this so obviously, when you spawn them, they come in male and female. So you get. To I do like that, though. Because uh, before, it was always just the same particular character that you got whenever you spawned down a new employee. And now it spawns out, you know, either a male or female. It's different variation. And this goes alongside all the other new different mascots that we've we've gotten. So we got a nice nice new collection of mascots for players, which we hope they'll really enjoy seeing doing their thing around the park. So there's some more interesting staff um, features that we can talk about. Um, one of which is the staff zone. Yeah. So the, the staff zones is a really great way to sort of uh, paint out onto your park where your different staff are going to work. So you can, you know, if you, if you were to create a new one here, uh, and you will be able to just draw in where it connects uh, for the staff and then when you place staff in that zone they will then operate within the bounds. I love this and this is what I suspected on on that uh, one uh, pre-order trailer that we got where it showed you know it uh, painting uh, you know I saw the brush there we figured that that's what it was and it looked like that on the screen as well that it was painting it out so um, I really like this feature. Um, instead of us clicking on the rides and where we want them to go, now we just we paint it out where where the path is that we that we want them to work in. Into that zone. And this links really deeply actually with the staff scheduler. Let's say now I've made this new zone, zone six, um, and now I wanted to make sure that our new Viking that we just placed down always stays in there. So um, we can open the full scheduler here. When you open up the staff schedule, you can see all the different uh, staff that you have and their names. You can locate them. Yeah, so that is something that is really sort of uh, new over over the original Planet Coaster is the ability that you always is, is the functionality of only paying the staff for the work that they do. So when they are not working in your park, you're not paying them for that. I like that. And I, again, more realism, more management aspect. This gives you more of a feel of what goes on uh, when managing a park. Uh, 
you are, you guys already got my money. I, I, I already pre-ordered the deluxe version. I just, just, just give me the game now, you know. I don't care if it's, you know, a little messed up. If it's a little funky, that's fine, you know. I'm happy to play it as it is until you get the full patch ready and it's all done, you know. Just, 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 just let me play it now, please. Yeah, just, uh, it gives you a lot of control to really specify and uh, sort of maximize your profits uh, um, with this with this system. Exactly, and you can also go even even deeper. So if I just chose, let's say, a janitor, for example, um, I can go into advanced settings, and then I can select all the things that I want them to do. If I go into the schedule here, you can see they're all currently, I believe, they're unassigned to a staff yep. zone. Um, so if I wanted that staff to jump into this new zone I made for the plaza, zone six, and then now he's there, and it inherits the color and the icon as well. So you don't always have to know the exact name of the zone. As long as when you set it up, you're aware that oh, the red area is this one, yellow is that one, is yeah, you know, another accessible thing for us basically. If we were to look at one of our staff members themselves, so on here we can see on their panel that they are content, they've got fair pay and they have taken a break. So what this all feeds in is that the the, um, the pay and taking rests within a day all feed into the morale system of a staff which means that if you keep your staff happy they will work more efficiently in your park and if you don't keep... Wait so if you want to you can give them low pay or high pay? Okay. Keep them happy they're going to leave your park. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the attractions. Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier in the heat maps, the guests have different I mean, Obviously, if you get like really crunched for numbers, you know, you have everyone take a bit of a pay cut for a little bit until numbers get back up, you get the numbers back up, and then you can get them back onto the fair pay. Or, you know, all of a sudden you start making bank. Now you reward your team by giving them a higher pay for a little bit until you have to bring them down to the uh, fair pay. So guests will be examining your ride to see if it matches the tolerances that they have. To see how your rides match up with this, if you were to click on the ride for me. Uh, and then if we go to the uh, testing tab, yep. and on here you can see your, we're on, currently on the live data, but you can also see the results, which tells you all of this information about the, about the ride. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be able to see from, um, from our guests in, in the park see, and actually try and meet their needs, even for the attractions, um, which is really useful. So hopefully you can't just go in there, free roam, <laughs> these incredibly crazy coasters. You have to kind of think about what your guests would actually feel about that, beyond the limitations of actually building the coaster itself. And one of our other tolerances uh, is actually to do with what the guests can or can't eat. Would you mind showing us a, a very brief overview of the shop's menu so we can see how how these restrictions play into the menu. Sure thing, yeah. So, um, obviously got to shop here, chief beef, um, primarily does beef, uh, to no one's <laughs> surprise. Um, so yeah, you've got your, your guest thoughts about what, what people have. Um, you can go into the prices then, you can change the prices and choose um, what different things you'd like it to serve. So obviously you've got gluten-free burger, cheeseburger, plain burger, and then these dietary requirements, as, as you just mentioned, will appear now inside of these as well. So you know that when you select different different items for your shop, um, you know that they're going to have certain, you're going to be meeting the needs of some, but maybe excluding others. Yeah. Um, so if you were to just click on one of the, on the cogs on the right there, which is for the settings of this particular menu item, uh, you can see on the, on the left. All right, so it looks as though, I, I mean, I, I watched this already, so I'm just going to go through it real quick, but you can add on extra stuff here. Uh, the more extra stuff you got on there, obviously, the people will pay more for it, and you make more money, but with this here, it constrains on who can eat it, so 100 people, 100% 100 of the people in your park can, you know, eat gluten in this particular park that's on there right now, and only 68% of the people will eat meat. So uh, you have to factor that in and that will then tell you what you're limiting yourself to, etc. So it does add more management to it. Uh, me, quite frankly, I'm not really all big on this aspect here, but it is more of the realism. It is more of the management. So, hey, all for that. But uh, I'm not really looking forward to it personally myself. And the panel there, we've got sort of X can actually eat those that distributor. We've also got the solar panels as well. So that gives you a green option. So you've got these, yeah, and then you've also got... Yeah, then you can hook that up. And as you can see here, these items are showing up red. What this means in this case is that they are not actually connected up to anything else on the grid. So they're not, you know, you've got a power generator that's not doing anything. You might want to make use of it. Is there anything different between the sort of solar and then the actual power generator? Yeah, so so several of the, the differences you'll experience is that the actual cost to sort of generate electricity will be different across the different generators and also the costs to place them. So solar panels are significantly more expensive than your generators. Um, so the next thing is the water supply. Um, so very, very similarly to the to the power systems, we have the same sort of thing of having, um, we have a well, we have distributors, and we got the we got the pump. Um, so the well and the pump are the things that draw the water. Yep, so these are your water generators. Yep. Uh, and then your uh, you then have a distributor, which has a, a radius of effect, and that needs to hit the water around it. Exactly. So you want these to be near in your pool so that they have effect. Um, we use the same systems that we do for power, so hopefully if you master one, you can master the other pretty quickly. Yeah. Cool. So. Now we've got our water system uh, set up. You can sort of see that the, the pools themselves actually have water that, uh, you know, clean water that the guests will be happy to use. Exactly. So um, if you didn't have this in place, you start to see that the pools themselves would start to turn like a murky green. Um, they really wouldn't be appetizing to the guests and you find that they, they, they won't start coming to the pool because they think it's... Um... 
Okay, I know this is probably going to sound a little disgusting, but I am going to probably try that out. I'm going to make a little pool, but no filtration system, and just see how eventually it turns out. Um, and how long it takes, too. Because I am curious how long that will take for it to change. Uh, because are we going to need to place these down first before we get the pools down, or... Uh, like how much time in between from putting down the pools to putting up the the pump system and everything do we need to get it working? Um, you know, you know before uh, before we have to have it working before it gets too dirty. Got really dirty and muggy, so having this in place will keep all those pools pools clean, and also for your flumes as well because the flumes do um, require yeah. you to have the clean water as well. Yeah, and the more guests that you have going through into your pools, the more sort of filtration that you will need to have set up. So this is based on the throughput of guests. Exactly, and very similar to the uh, to the power systems. Um, again, you have the things like being able to quickly use the panels to go between objects and see what's inside of them. Um, so hopefully, yeah, as we said, master one, master the other. The next thing we wanted to move on to was maintenance, right? Uh, yeah, so maintenance. So this is the uh, the mechanics and the wear and tear. So looking at the maintenance tab of the water pump, we have multiple areas, including the condition and the servicing. The the condition is a familiar part of from the original Planet Coaster, where it will start to degrade after a certain period of time, and then your uh, your device will break down. So the servicing is the ability for the players to control if this condition is going to go down or not. So you have the service badge, and this badge will sort of last for a certain amount of time. And if you don't keep on top of your servicing, the the badge will you will lose the service badge and the condition will start to degrade exactly and so so you basically you want your mechanics to be um in the vicinity doing the exact thing you want them to do you could do this to the scheduler um but equally as you said you could you could do emergency call if you want an emergency refurbish as well so you do still have this option in a, in case of an emergency you can press these buttons um but it's much more advisable that you go through the sort of scheduler and just ensure that some, the service is due like we can see it's due in 108 minutes um so you just yeah you want to keep on top of it to make sure that your conditions never drop too low all right so the final thing we want to talk to you today about is the finances um so these can be found inside of part management. Um, you'll see little spatterings of this information all around mm. all the info panels and everything, but um, a really good way to see the global view of how your financials are doing in the park is through the management screen. So if I go into the financial sections here, we did briefly touch on this earlier, but I'm going to uh, show you a bit more about it this time. So you've got your park value, park cash, profit breakdown. As you can see, there's a you've got this huge graph on the right. This is again something I mentioned before about trying to make things, everything really accessible to the players. So players understand everything when it's a lot more visually attractive. So we wanted to include these graphs. Um, and when you first start off the park, you may not see it being this useful, but the longer your park draws out, the more you start to see these trends and you get to see um, how it becomes actual useful information. If you really aren't doing too well, you can actually take out a loan. So the loan system here, so pretty simple. You take out a certain amount of money. Um, and then, so let's say I wanted to take out now this I really like. I like the fact that we can adjust this because remember in in the first Planet Coaster you had certain contracts, uh, loan contracts that you could accept. But it was fixed there. You couldn't play about how much you needed. And if you needed more than the one contract then sometimes you had to take out like two or three of them. You could only have three out at a time. Uh, so I like this that you can you can choose how much of a loan you need so that way you have what you need to get your park done. This is definitely a big improvement. I really do like this a lot. Very large loan. A very large loan. <laughs> um, I'm paying it off for the rest of my life. Um, so you take out this mode, and then you get the debt acquired. Uh I'm curious if this here... It's not even at the halfway point yet, it looks like. And that's at 88,000. I wonder what the max is. Alright, everyone. Comment down below right now what you think the max is. And then come November 6th, we'll go ahead and check out what the max is when we get our hands on the game. But comment down below and let me know what you think your guess is and uh, we'll see who's right come November 6th. Um, you won't get any interest on this one, but there is a sales cut. So the way you pay it back is rather than having to come in here and have to decide on how much you want to pay off that, um, you can it basically takes it out of your sales. So you never actually see the money being taken directly out. You, it's kind of like it gets taken off all the money yeah. that you receive. While okay. the sales cut does take off the money. I like that. Before you, so you don't have to worry about it. You do still have that option to pay off if you want to, but it's a secondary option. It's not the main way that you have to worry about it. So you can carry on playing. As long as you're improving the performance of your park, it will actually get better and you will start to pay off. So this isn't something necessarily I have to worry about, but as you see here, you pay off your loan. It says how much of your park cash is left, how much repayment and the sales cut. Um, as you see, the, sa the sales cut itself will decrease based on the amount you pay back or the amount of loan you take in the first place. Thanks so much for watching and looking at the expanded management options of Planet Coaster 2. Planet Coaster 2 is now available for pre-order, launching on November 6th for PC and console. Well, that was uh, amazing. Frontier, you guys have done an amazing job from what I've seen so far. Uh, like I said, I, I already got it pre-ordered. I can't wait. Just <laughs> give me the game now. Um, 
But yeah, no, it, it it it's looking good. I'm I'm loving this here. Like I said, November sixth, we will be doing a live stream of it when it's released, um, and we'll go through in sandbox mode first just to see what we have. Uh, you know, figure a few things out, test a few things, and then we'll probably go right into the career mode or what looks to be also a franchise mode. So, uh, you know, we'll probably go ahead and do one of those. How about you comment down below which one you would like me to see, uh, which one you would like to see me do, uh, career or franchise. Um, and then uh, I'll probably have a poll as we get closer to November 6th. Um, on which one we should do career or franchise mode but uh thank you all again for joining me thank you all again for your support and and the uh, subscri subscriptions that you guys have been doing the uh, subbing to my channel um and all the uh comments and the likes thank you all so much like i said my goal is 500 uh subs uh by the end of the year so let's go ahead and uh, help me uh help you help me get this uh to 500 by uh sharing out this video liking and subbing and uh thank you all again have a wonderful wonderful day and i'll see you all next time in reality